Hello, I'm Chaplain Wood, and this is Truth in Action. I want to spend this time to really bring some encouragement to each of you. I know whenever I'm in the Word of God, I, I have to uh, consume it first. It ha I have to apply it to myself first, and, and I find that it really encourages me, and then I, of course, want to share it with, with others. Um, and so as we, as we are in the situation we're in, worldwide, pandemic, uh, each of us find ourselves in uh, different situations. But depending on what state you're in, uh, maybe you're overseas, depending on what country you're in, I just want to encourage you. And I always go to the Word of God for encouragement. And so today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 5, in the first five verses. And it says, and it starts out saying this, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loves him, that was begot of him, also loves those who are begotten of him. Let's stop there and let's look at this. Whosoever, that, that includes everyone. That's anyone that will believe that Jesus is the Christ. Now that word Christ uh, is, is, the, is the word Messiah in the Hebrew. So if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah or that Jesus is our salvation, our Savior, then you are born of God. You are born again. You are born in the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God. And so when we look at this, and being a child of God um, uh, brings us, should bring us encouragement, brings us power, uh, brings us uh, stability. And so we, we look at this. And it's, then it says, it goes on and says that, uh, and I'll paraphrase, those that are born again of God must love God and love those who have been born again of God. So in other words, we don't just love God as our Father, but we also must love those who are part of God's family, who are in the kingdom of God. So we love, we love God and we love others. And that is, and we're gonna talk about that, that is the two great commandments. And in fact, it says in verse two, by this we know. So you can have a knowing, a knowledge that we by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. We know we love others because we're loving God. And God always, when you love God and God pours his love through you, it's to show love to others. Not, it doesn't just stop with me. It isn't just a relationship with me and God, but it's a relationship with me and God and others. Uh, and it's not just, this is talking about others in the kingdom, but it really is all others, that I must have a love towards all others. And so, and so we, we know that we are, because we love, we know that we are the children of God. And this is verse 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Now, I'm going to make this real simple for you. Uh, I believe that all the commandments must be kept, but... Because Jesus died on the cross for us, and because he kept all commandments perfectly, that when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then in him we become righteous. And what does that mean that we become righteous? That means we have right standing with God as one who has fulfilled with, in Christ all the commandments. And so we, in Christ, because Christ, is, uh, because Christ fulfilled the law, if we're in Christ, then the law has been fulfilled through us also. And so when we, when we look at this and we keep his commandments, the commandments he's talking about is love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. For these two commandments, all the law and the prophets hang. And so when we love God, we will keep his commandments. Now, we may not be perfect in the physical, but he looks at the heart. He's looking at the heart. So don't think, okay, well, I, I kept this commandment, kept that commandment, but on this day, I didn't keep this commandment. Well, if you repented and your heart is right with God, he's not looking at your actions. He's looking at your heart. He judges you by your heart. And because you love him, then you walk according to his ways as perfectly as you can. No excuses. You are willing and and able to obey God in the heart. And so I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm encouraging you today to, to understand this, that, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, they're not too burdensome. They're not hard. 
We can love God. It's easy to love God. What has he done for us? He's done so much for us. You know, he not only saved us, not only uh, create, created a new person, but he also made us righteous. He also brought us into the family. He also reconciled relationships. He's healing us. He's, I mean, we're just, we get all the benefits of knowing God. And so it's not too burdensome to, to love God. Now, it may be a little more difficult to love others, but remember, we love others in the power of God. It's not by our own power. God gives us the grace to love others. God gives us the grace to forgive. God gives us the ability through him and his spirit to love others and to, and to love ourselves. And so verse 3 says that, it, that his commandments are not too grievous or burdensome. And so... And so we can do it, is what we're saying, in Christ. Now remember, I, I shouldn't have to qualify this, but all of this is done because we are born of God, because we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is our Savior. All of this is done not in our own ability, our own ways. It's all done. It's all accomplished. It's all We are able to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because God's grace and Holy Spirit dwells within us. That's it. And so we can do it. In fact, we should never say, I cannot do what God has asked me to do because he's the one that gives us the power and the authority and the ability to do what he wants us to do. And he is not, he, he, he is not powerless. He doesn't, he, he doesn't come to a place in, in his abilities to say, well, that, you're right, that's too far. I can't do that in you. No, of course he can. So when God calls you to do something, you have the ability in Christ Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and because God said you can, that we can do this. Verse 4, for whatever is born of God, this is the good news, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Listen, we have faith in God. That's how we get, that's how we overcome this world. Now listen, we don't, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. The just shall walk by faith. And that's what we are. We are the just. We are the righteous because we've accepted Jesus as the Messiah, as the Christ. And so because of that, we are born of God. Immediately, because we are born of God, we already have overcome the world because Jesus overcame the world. And we are born of God in Christ. We're in Christ, and Christ has overcome the world. Therefore, we have overcome the world in Christ. And so whatever is happening in the world, we have the victory. We overcome. And remember, we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. And faith is believing without seeing. Faith is, is a knowing uh, without having to see the evidence of it. You just know that it's true. And so we have faith that what this word says in 1 John 5, 4 is that we, because we are born of God, that we have overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And we have enough faith to believe the Messiah. That's how it starts out. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ or is the Messiah or is the Savior is born of God. Verse 4, For whatever is born of God, therefore you must believe that Jesus is the Savior, overcomes the world. So we overcome the world because we have faith that Jesus is the Messiah. And it says in verse 5, Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Listen, because Jesus is the Son of God and we accept him, then we become the children of God. We call him Father. And we, because we are in that family, we have, we have the power and the ability and the dominion over this present age, over this world, and over everything that's in it, and we overcome and we walk in the victory. You know, I love 2 Corinthians 2.14. It says, Now thanks be to God who always, always, always leads us in triumph in Christ. Listen, when we're in Christ, we always are in triumph. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Listen, because we're in Christ, we win. Because we're in Christ, we overcome. Because we're in Christ. Now that should, that should uh, give you hope. And hope gives you courage. And I have hope and courage, even in times like these, that we are overcomers in Christ. We are overcomers because we are born 
of God. Now listen, whatever you allow, whatever I allow to captivate my mind will also rule my life. Now I've chosen to allow Christ and his word to captivate my mind. Therefore, Christ Jesus rules in my life. And I would say this, that if you, that if you, this is an encouragement, that if you have thoughts in your mind, if you're, if you're captivated by fear, if you're captivated by doubt, if you're captivated by the troubles of this world, then the troubles of this world will rule your life. But if you change your mind, let your mind be transformed, not being, not being conformed to, the, to this present age, to this world, which is fear, doubt, unbelief, troubles, sickness and disease, if we don't give in to this world, we can have our minds transformed and be ruled by the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit, and not by the, uh, the, this present age and the powers and the principalities and the rulers that exist in this world. They are under our feet and we win. Amen. Hey, I want to encourage you if you got any, uh, if you need to get in touch with me or if you need to talk to me about anything, you can text or call, especially if you're in this area that, we're, that I'm in right now. Um, those of you that know me outside can, can email me. So God bless you. Be encouraged. And I'll, uh, I'll see you down the road. God bless.